Hey all, Ryan the Tone Geek here, and today I'm going to try something different. I'm going to have some coffee before I make a video. Uh, I was watching a couple of the old videos and I'm kind of boring, so I'm going to have some coffee. It's 5 o'clock in the morning right now. Uh, my daughter's sleeping, my wife's at the gym, and I have some alone time. So I wake up early and this is what I do, and this is how I spend my time um, waking up early and doing things. Supposedly Bill Gates, Elon Musk, all those people other do it. I'm just waking up because it's a good fit for me, but if those people want to wake up as well early in the morning, give me a shout out. Bill, Steve, Steve Jobs, you're not there? Oh, oops. Anyway, um, so I've been searching the internet high and low to find the exact light assembly for Seal String Singer number four, the original, not mine. I know which one mine is, but the that if I'm going to make a clone, I better do it the right way. I think the indicator lamp is a pretty important piece, uh, visually and functionally. I was playing an outdoor gig. The neon lamp that I have in there is a 125 volt neon lamp. It works good, but I couldn't tell if it was my amp was on or off during the outdoor gig. So this might help too. It's it's, it's about as bright because it uses the same light bulb. It uses these Fender 47 lamp styles or T3 and a quarter. Um, 6.3 volt lamp, so I'm going to have to rewire uh, to the heaters on that to make this work. But this is a Dialyte 135 series, and this is a Dialyte um, socket holder for a T3 and a quarter. Uh, the only difference here is that the threads on this is 9 16th 24, and this is according to the data sheet. 9 16 27 so i don't know if that was a typo or if that's legit but anyway they screw in real nice together and don't wiggle around it feels solid i don't know wh why but it's it's just there it works so i'm pretty excited about that um also what i got in the mail is this 47 uf 500 volt capacitor this is for my hot rod deluxe it's going to stiffen things up uh i don't know if anyone has a hot rod deluxe out there but Sometimes when you're playing away and it's a high, you know, b bass sort of thing going on, um, you'll start to flab out, and that's one of the complaints about that amp. Um, this will help. This will stiffen up that power supply, give that extra little boost it needs. Uh, another alternative is going ahead and changing the tone stack to roll off the lows, um, but I'm not going to do that. This is some switches in my black. It's right there. You can't see it because it's off camera. Uh, John Mayer clone. I have a rock and a jazz switch that's kind of doing nothing. I don't really use the rock and jazz that much, so I'm going to swap it out with another switch just because I totally anticipate something going wrong with that switch once I heat it up again. But anyway, so I'm going to replace it with a Carling, and the switch I have in that amp is not a Carling, and I'm every time I need to do a switch repair, I'm going to go with Carling. Um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just think that their switches are solid. Like it's very authoritative when you swap that. So if you're into building pedals or amps, definitely pony up, get the Carling. It will n likely never fail on you. I have a few guitars that lost their s switch tips. So I'm just gonna put them on. That's kind of boring. That's not what we're here for. Oh, how did I forget? I just looked down. So. To round out my Steel String Singer clone visually and functionally, um, right now I have G12, uh, Celestian G12, 65s, um, two of them, and they're great, the Heritage series, sound amazing, but they're not original. So what I did was I went out and I found, and they are three serial numbers apart, so they were likely on the bench at the same time. Two JBL D131s. These were pulled for actually from a hi-fi stereo unit, not a guitar um, unit. So everything, it was just in a sealed box from California. Uh, maybe some rich folk out there in California for through the 60s and whatever. Listen to some great hi-fi music through these exact speakers. Now, when I received the speakers, I didn't anticipate this. But one speaker what is the original cone. It's kind of hard to see uh, for a D20. D20 and the D31s are 
pretty much the same. Um, a lot of people buy the D131s because they're cheaper and because you can recone them with the D120 kits or similar. Um, there's nothing to lose, so why not? But this uh, cone is a 21032, and there's an R at the end that was handwritten. I'm not sure why. Um, but this cone is functional. I plugged it in. Uh, there is cracks, stress cracks, because it's so I had tried super gluing it because I got nothing to lose if I'm going to redo these. Um, but yeah, see, so see, four inch aluminum dust cap, uh, paper surround. Uh, I plugged it in and started playing, and it just sounded thin. I don't know if it's because of the surround being cracked and such, but it just didn't sound very good. Uh, the other one, funny enough, is already reconed and it sounds amazing actually i put it in my deluxe uh extension one by 12 extension and it is like the best sounding speaker i if you follow my instagram i'm all about it i'm not sure it just it just sounds great i don't know if it's because it was reconed with an e120 kit uh or if it was reconed with an e120 kit in 1985 so it's got 30 plus years of experience and and movement um but it sounds great and so that kind of led me on a journey to find out is there any pictures of steel string singer number four that help would help me understand if that's got the original cone uh or the something else so i looked and sure enough i was looking at my uh, e120 cone through the back kind of like this and i saw through it i'm like what the heck is that and because it's a cloth around, it's got, you know, a little, it's porous. So the light kind of leaked through. And um, sure enough, I was like, all right, well, that should be pretty easy to find out. So I looked on the pictures of Steel String Singer, Steel String Singer SSS number four, this guy right here. Not this cabinet, but the, you know, the real deal. And sure enough, you can see right through it. So right around the outside, um, you can see light coming through. So it has the 120 kit. And it's the one that I like best. So that was my fear, is I would get you know, everything kind of down to the original D120, uh, D131 kit, cone, paper surround, everything I heard about that is not the best. Uh, and that was my fear, is I wouldn't like it. And I spent all this money acquiring these um, speakers, and I wouldn't like it. That would suck. But now that I have the D131 with an E120 kit experience, I think that's great and it's going to sound great. I'm going to send it out. I'm shopping around still for recone vendors. I think I'm pretty settled on which one I'll choose, but I'm not going to mention that right now. Um, but yeah, the price is right. And what's most important about these Al Alnico um, speaker magnets is that they sometimes can lose their strength over time, which means that they just start working less and less and touch sensitivity and all the rest. So I'm going to, uh, so I'm specifically looking for a vendor that will remag these. Even if it's okay, just remag it. I want this to work for the next 30 plus years. Um, that's my goal. And for that E120 kit to last the 35 years or 30 whatever years that it is, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty hopeful that that's what's going to happen. So to recap, I'm going to do some two mods. Stay tuned for some videos. I'm going to open up the Steel String Singer, document the light change and how that's going to look. I'm going to stiffen up my Hot Rod Deluxe using a extra capacitor in the power section. And I'll be making a switch. Oh, so what the switch is for. The switch is going to be used to switch between the standard um, John Mayer 2 Rock signature and the Serotone tone stack. So there's literally a jumper wire configuration. Um, jump between the two. The sear tone is very well rounded. It's a great amp. Um, it's just one wire. It's pretty ingenious how, uh, you know, what Nick at sear tone did there. So the other switch is going to be true to the original. It's a great sounding amp that way. Uh, the original, it's really best paired with a brighter amp. So it's not as well-rounded, in my opinion. It still sounds great, don't get me wrong. It's very jazzy. But it's um, this is going to be nice if I run with one amp or two amps. Likely it's always going to be one. But at least I have that opportunity versus the rock and the jazz. And I don't really use the jazz switch that much. Joe Bonamassa uses the jazz switch 
allegedly a lot lately. Um, so people on the forums are starting to like it more and open to that, but most people stick with the rock. I like the rock better. It's louder. It's rock and roll. Anyway, stay tuned. Subscribe, please. Bye.